Hello friends, Buffalo here. This is my 2009 Dodge Ram 1500 SLT. And I bought this truck. It had 104,000 miles on it. I'm up to 129,275 miles now, obviously. And this is my first time having the lights come on. I got my service four-wheel drive light coming on here and the ESP BAS traction control light. I've also got the traction control light here and the ABS light over here. Now that tire uh, pressure light stays on. The guy that had this truck before me disabled the, uh, the sensors for that, which I'm fine with. I check my own tire pressure anyway. But these lights were not on. They just came on this morning. The ABS service four-wheel drive, ESP BAS uh, flashing there and the traction control and all these came on together so i'm assuming it is one issue causing them all to come on i'm going to hook my diagnostics tool up here to the obd2 port and try to get a lead on what's going on here okay i've got my diagnostic scan tool here i've got it hooked up to the obd2 port got the key in the on position ran a scan on this little thing and in the ABS module, it did find a code. It is saying left front speed comparative performance. And that code typically means a wheel speed sensor. Okay, so have my wife take me on a little drive here while I run my scan tool to monitor all four wheel speed sensors. And as you can see, that left front wheel speed it's showing at 655 kilometers an hour. The other three wheels are showing the proper speed. So definitely not moving that wheel that fast. Something's going on with it. I need to pull that wheel off there and have a look. To get to that wheel speed sensor, I'm going to have to remove this brake caliper and the rotor. Start by removing the caliper. We've got a bolt here and a bolt here, 21 millimeter. That is the caliper bracket. Got a little hanger here. I don't want the caliper hanging by this brake hose. I'm going to use a screwdriver to spread this caliper out just a little bit. Then we'll just hang it right here out of the way. I'm going to mark this rotor before I pull it off. I always like to put my rotors on in the same orientation as I took them off from. So now we get a look at the wheel speed sensor. It goes in right here, little Allen bolt holding it in. I have already inspected the wire and I don't see any obvious tears or wire points or anything the uh, the connector seems to be in good shape so I'm gonna pull this out of here and see if we see anything going on hit it with a little PB blaster I actually already hit it once I've been letting it soak for a few minutes it appears to be a five millimeter hex head. So 
Let's see if we can get that out of there. Just kind of wiggle that thing until it comes loose. I don't see anything obvious with it. The tone wheel looks like it's in good shape from what little I can see of it. It may just went bad. I'm hoping that's the problem anyway. So I'm gonna get a new one of these and we'll pull this one off, put a new one on it, run a diagnostics and see if that fixed it. These are pretty inexpensive, so it's not that big of a deal if, uh, if that wasn't the actual cause of the issue, but I believe it is. Just held in place by a bunch of these push tabs. Some of them are loose here and I'm not sure even where they went. But anyway. And then to undo our connector here. It's got a little red lock. we got to slide forward. Then press down on it. Got it. So I've got my new one here. Comparing it to the old one, the connections and things are identical. So it is the right one. I always like to compare my new parts with my old parts that I take off. So all I can do is put this one on there and see if it helps. I always like to put just the smallest amount of dielectric grease on my plug-in connectors. It's just a Permatex dielectric grease. I do that with all my electrical connectors pretty much. So let me try to weave this back in here. First thing I'll do is hook it back to the connector. All right, I heard it click, pushed a little safety, and this thing actually snaps in up in here. So that's snapped in place. Fish this around through here, get it untangled. All right, so I'm going to insert my new sensor. And I'm just gonna hand tighten this little five millimeter bolt. I don't wanna risk breaking it. That feels about right to me. Old German torque, good and tight. So now it's just a matter of putting everything back the way it came off. Time to put the brake caliper back on. Those torque to 130 foot pounds.
last but not least, torque these lug nuts to 135 pound feet. All right, let's double check them all. Nothing left to do now, except to go test this thing out. All right, so I've got my hot little mama here to take me for a ride. And guess what? That fixed it. Now all four wheel speed sensors are reading the same. The lights on the dash went out without me having to turn them off with the scan tool, even though I will go ahead and clear those codes after I'm done here. So that's another good sign. This right here is the data though. This is the evidence that left front wheel speed sensor was uh, way off. Now it's right in there with the rest of them. We got it. All right, so we got the lights back off. Everything's looking good. Today's video was really straightforward. I didn't have to go in any wild goose chases or anything. Look, I'm not a professional auto mechanic. Some of these videos that I'm gonna post, you'll see me struggle trying to find different things, uh, trying to work out a proper diagnosis. Today's was relatively smooth. Turned out to be a $16 wheel speed sensor. So I replaced it with one off of Amazon and lights are out. She's back on the road. Everything's looking good. The, you know, I couldn't have done it without a good scan tool. One tool I recommend that everybody gets is a decent scan tool if you're gonna be like me and try to take care of your own vehicles or your family's vehicles. Like I say, I'm not a professional auto mechanic, but I do do the upkeep on my vehicles and my family's vehicles. So uh, a, a scan tool is a must. Can you imagine trying to track down that wheel speed sensor, which one it was and everything, without some kind of a diagnostic tool to tell you which one it was? It, it would be tough. But I guess that's all I got. Thank you all for watching. If the video helped you in any way or you just enjoyed it, hit that like button, go ahead and subscribe, and I'll talk at you again soon.